warming has been affecting glaciers in the North and South Pole. As glaciers melt, the sea level rises. Water expands as it melts. In 1910, Glacier National Park in the Rocky Mountains was home to 150 glaciers. Today, there are only 30, and most of the remaining glaciers have shrunk in area by two-thirds. Glaciers are freshwater, and as they melt, they push the heavier salt water down. Over the past 30 years, at least 10% of the Arctic ice has declined. Alaska's Muir Glacier is one example of these drastic changes. In 1780, the glacier was at its maximum position at the mouth of Glacier Bay. It has thinned out dramatically since then. According to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, Muir Glacier has decreased in length up to 7 miles and its thickness has decreased by more than 2,625 feet. 46 gigatons of ice from Alaskan glaciers was lost on average each year from 2003 to 2010. A trail side sign notes that since 1901, Sperry Glacier has shrunk from more than 800 acres to 300 acres. Glaciers are also important to our present day understanding of climate change. Scientists study ice cores inside of glaciers. The air bubbles inside of each ice core give evidence to what the climate was like as far back as 1.5 million years. Within 30 years, if CO2 levels continue to rise, nearly all of the glaciers will be gone. Cities at sea level will flood, animals will be displaced, ecosystems will crumble, and there will be more storms, hurricanes, and flooding. It's going to take time, but every little bit helps. We as 7th graders at West End Secondary School want to stop the melting of glaciers. In order for us to do this, we are acting globally and asking the Chancellor of the Department of Education to create rooftop gardens on top of New York City schools in order to reduce CO2 emissions. Please sign our petition here.